When it comes to adding an aftermarket amplifier to a factory car audio system, we need a way to convert the speaker level signal out of the factory head unit or out of the factory premium amplifier to an RCA low level signal that our new amplifier can accept. For many years, the Audio Control LC2i has been a go-to line output converter to convert the high level signal to low level. The need for some new factory integration features and a goal of making setup and tuning a little more simple led Audio Control to design their new LC2i Pro. In this video, we're gonna do an unboxing of this. We're gonna go through all the features. We're gonna do a test installation and setup. I'm Mark from the YouTube channel, Car Audio Fabrication, here today on behalf of Audio Control to give you a look. So in this video, we're gonna use the LC2i Pro to convert the signal from a factory audio system through the LC2i Pro to an aftermarket amplifier and to power this subwoofer. So we're doing a full installation and tune on this device. Before we can do that though, let's do a quick unboxing and look at the measurements and specs. First off, we have the instruction manual inside. If you open this up, I know a lot of times this will get discarded really quickly, but you want to definitely read this and take note of the advanced features of this device so we can install it and set it up properly. The first thing I noticed that's new about the Pro version is of course we have the LC2i Pro itself, but this also comes with the ACR1 remote dash control. Along with the dash control is of course the connection to connect the two devices. That way you can have the device in the trunk of your vehicle and the dash control up front. And it looks like they also give you the legendary audio control guitar pick. What's the guitar pick for? Well, it's perfect for adjusting the settings on this device and also on amplifiers. So that's everything that comes in the packaging. What about dimensions? It looks like we are about seven inches wide, just a hair over three inches deep, and about one inch tall. In comparison to the normal LC2i, the LC2i Pro is a little bit longer. It's about the same depth, but the new Pro version is definitely not nearly as tall. Now spec-wise, you're gonna be connecting this to the speaker level signal coming out of the factory system, and this can handle up to 400 watts of input into this device. Now that spec of 400 watts in has led to some confusion in the past. You're just converting the signal with this. You could have a billion watts of power downstream of this and be just fine. There's no limit on how many watts you can have your system system be, that limit only applies to how many watts can be coming into the device to convert the signal. The advantage here is even if the stock radio does have a pretty powerful amplifier, the Pro can handle that power coming in. The Pro also can provide a very strong RCA signal coming out with up to 9.5 volts of output. So now that that's all out of the way, we can do a simulated install and adjust all the settings here on the test bench. I wanna explain what we're working with here so you guys understand. This is a factory premium system pulled out of a car. So you can see we have the factory head unit, we have the factory amplifier, everything will be powered here from a car battery. And I have all of my different connections down here. This allows me to connect to the speaker level signal that is coming out of the factory system. So basically it's just like we're in the car with the factory system. We already have our aftermarket amplifier installed along with our subwoofer installed. The only thing we need to do is we need to adapt the signal coming out of this factory system through the LC2i Pro and then send it into the RCA inputs of our amp. So first step of installation, we wanna mount this somewhere in the vehicle that it's not gonna be exposed to any excessive heat, moisture, or dirt. And we wanna make sure that we do have access to the top here so that we can adjust these settings. The Pro has these pretty standard mounting tabs on each side, so we would just mount using a couple of different screws, and usually the best spot for this is on our amplifier rack close to our amps. The LC2i Pro is an active line output converter, so we need a 12 volt constant lead and ground. For this, Audio Control recommends a 14 or 16 gauge wire and a one amp fuse. So that's our 12 volt constant and our ground. Now, if the factory system has a switched 12 volt source that turns on and off with the radio, we would then connect that in to the remote in connection. We would also have the trigger mode switch in that top position there for remote in. 
But unfortunately, not every factory audio system has a switch 12 volt lead. So I wanna show you guys some cool functionality that is built into this by using either the GTO setting or the audio setting. If we flip this to the GTO setting, GTO uses a DC offset signal from our speaker inputs to detect that the radio is on. So what that means is it can detect that there's power at the speakers and then we don't need that remote in in order for the device to turn on. It will automatically turn on knowing that. The original LC2i includes those two features for the remote in or the GTO setting, but on the original LC2i, you have to change a jumper by pulling it out with some pliers and switching it to a different set of terminals. Something new on the Pro version is this third setting that is called audio. What is that for? Unfortunately, the electrical design of some factory systems doesn't allow the GTO feature to properly detect the DC offset. So with some systems, it doesn't work correctly. This is why the Pro version adds this new audio trigger. With the audio setting on, the LC2i Pro is actually monitoring the speaker level input to look for an actual musical signal coming in the device in order to know to turn on. So in that setting, this means that you could have the radio turned on, but the volume all the way down, and the system isn't going to actually turn on until you turn up the volume and introduce actual music signal coming into the speaker level inputs, then everything turns on. So that's the trigger mode explained. For our example here, I'm gonna leave this set on the GTO setting. Next, we can connect to our speaker inputs in order to bring signal in. Now, what I mean by that is we can tap into the connections that are actually connected to the speakers of the vehicle. That way we're getting that speaker level signal. Now, depending on what outputs we plan on using from this and what amplifiers we're planning on using, that determines what speaker we need to connect to. If we were connecting something like, let's say for example, a four channel mids and highs amplifier, we would wanna use the main output and we would wanna make sure that our signal coming in is a full range signal. In other words, whatever frequencies we want to be coming out, in that case, it would be the mids and highs. We wanna make sure that that's what we're tapping into from the factory system. In our example here, we want to use the subwoofer output because we're getting signal for a subwoofer amplifier and a subwoofer. So in order to do that, I've tapped into the subwoofer lead from the factory OEM system. I've done that because a lot of these other speakers coming out of this factory amplifier, they limit the bass information. There is no bass frequencies, whereas the subwoofer channel coming out of this amplifier does have all the bass frequencies, so that's what I want coming in for my signal. In a case like this where you do not have left and right, you want to make sure that you take this set of leads into the left input. So we've made our power connections, we've made our signal connections, we've got got power on everything now. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio and make sure our device powers up. There we go. So we are good to go. I want to point out that we do not have a remote in, but we do have the GTO setting turned on. So now the device knows that it can turn on since the radio is on. There is an issue though. This amplifier here, it has 12 volt constant connected and it has ground, but it is not turning on because we do need to give it a remote turn on lead. A quick side note here, this is an audio control amplifier, which means they also feature GTO on their amps. So that same setting is on their amps. But for the purposes of this video, let's just assume that this is a generic amplifier that does not have that feature and let's assume we do need to give it that 12 volt remote in. What's cool about the LC2i Pro is it gives us a remote out and this remote out only has 12 volts on it when the device is actually on. I've ran a connection from the remote out to the remote in of this amplifier. So now since this is on, this amp turns on as well. And when the device turns off, we lose that switched 12 volt lead. Now we need to connect our signal coming out. That is easy enough just using an RCA signal cable. And we'll also want to connect our base level control. Do keep in mind that there are differences between the main output and the base output. The main output is a fixed full range output suitable for connecting to multi-channel amplifiers. So this output here is affected by the volume control on your source unit, but it is not affected by the volume control control on the ACR1. The base output has a 1000 Hz low pass filter and is variable. So it is controlled by the ACR1 and it is also affected by the AccuBase. We'll talk about this and setting the levels in a second. First, we have a couple of more new settings here that the Pro adds that the LC2i does not have. First off, load select. A lot of times what happens on factory premium amplifiers or even the factory head unit is if you're disconnecting speakers, what can happen is the factory system can recognize that there's no longer stock speakers attached and this can lead to it intentionally shutting itself off which means 
we're no longer gonna have signal coming in. By changing the setting on the load select, we essentially make it seem like there are speakers still connected to the factory system, so the factory system will stay on and play like it should. In the manual here, you can see audio control suggestions for whether or not you should use the 20 ohm setting or the 60 ohm setting. And if you have a vehicle that doesn't have any sort of issues like that, you can just use the normal 20 kilo ohm setting. The next upgrade feature of the Pro is the ground isolation setting. A lot of times when you're integrating with a factory system bringing in the factory signal, it can unfortunately lead to some system noise. You might have alternator whine or some buzz coming through and a lot of times it has to do with the ground. The Pro gives us the ability to change these settings which allows us to remove the noise. By setting the ground, we get the power ground and audio ground tied together. ISO, which is the normal setting, this is the power ground and audio ground are separated, but there's also the 200 ohm setting which provides 200 ohms of resistance between the power ground and the audio ground. It's really nice that if you do have a buzz or whine coming through your system, you don't have to do all sorts of complex testing and moving your ground around, you can just flip the switch. I've got everything powered back up here. I've disconnected the RCA signal wires and that's because we're about to do our level setting. And what's really nice about this is the LC2i Pro has this maximized light built in. In this case, we're setting up a subwoofer amplifier. So I like to use a negative 10 dB 40 Hertz test tone. For a mids and highs amplifier, I like to use a negative 5 dB 1000 Hertz test tone. With our RCAs disconnected and the test tone playing, I slowly turn up the level until that maximized light comes on and then I'll just back it off a slight amount. So it's very easy to set the levels properly using that maximized light. Next, we wanna talk about AccuBase. So a lot of times with these factory systems, what happens is as you turn up the volume, the factory head unit and amplifier will actually reduce the amount of bass output proportionately to the volume. So you're not having as much bass coming out the louder you turn it up. And the reason that they do that is they wanna protect their inexpensive stock system components like the speakers. What AccuBase does is as we're turning up that volume, once we get to the point that we start to notice that bass rolling off, we can tell the AccuBase to activate, which means that it's going to start adding that bass back into the system. So long story short, it's restoring that bass that should be there because we've upgraded our amplifier and our subwoofers. Our new system components can handle that bass like it's meant to be. AccuBase is a feature that's built into the original LC2i, but it is a little bit more difficult to adjust it, and that's why Audio Control has added this light. I wanna show you the procedure here because it's really easy to do. First off, we're gonna turn the AccuBase threshold all the way down, and we're gonna set the AccuBase level at the 12 o'clock position. Next, you go to the factory radio and you wanna turn the volume all the way down and you're going to play a bass song that you're familiar with. Now, you would also wanna make sure that your RCA signal cables are connected and your amp and subwoofer are playing. But in this case, I want you guys to be able to hear what I'm actually saying, so I'm leaving that disconnected. What you're going to do is you're going to turn up the volume on the head unit and really closely listen to your subwoofer and just listen for that point that the subwoofer doesn't seem like it's getting any louder as you increase the volume. In my case, let's say that that happens at two bars right here on the radio. With everything still playing, we are going to very slowly turn up the threshold control until that light turns on. With the light turned on, we know that the AccuBase circuitry is active, so now we can adjust and bring in and add the amount of bass that we want to. I wanna simulate this actually working for you guys so you can see that on our volume control, we're currently only at like half a bar here, so the AccuBase is not active. And I'm gonna slowly turn this up for you guys and watch just a second here, it should turn on. There, it's on. So once we got to that volume point on the factory head unit that the base does need to be restored, AccuBase turns on and we know it's on because of this handy new light. Now don't forget though, not every single system needs to have the AccuBase. So if we did wanna defeat the AccuBase and turn it off, we can just turn the level all the way down and we can also turn the threshold all the way down so it's never going to come on. So now my friends, we've made all of our connections and we have set up this device perfectly for years of great sound and reliable performance. Let's turn it up and listen to some bass. 
So the next time you are installing an aftermarket amplifier with a factory system and you need a line output converter, definitely consider the LC2i. And if you need those more advanced integration features and setup procedure, check out the LC2i Pro. You can learn more about both of these at the links down in the video description. I'm Mark from the YouTube channel Car Audio Fabrication. Again, on behalf of Audio Control, thank you guys for watching.